Good morning, everyone. And thank you to the children from the Canberra Grammar Primary Choir. Welcome, everyone. My name is Rob Stefanik. I'm the Secretary of the Department of Parliamentary Services. And I wish you a warm welcome to what is the 10th anniversary of our Christmas Giving Tree event. Uh, before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people, and I pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Without further ado, I'd like to introduce the President of the Senate, Senator the Honourable Sue Lyons, to make some opening remarks. President. Hello everyone and welcome to my colleagues uh, that are here this morning. Thank you for taking time to come along today and I pay my respects to the traditional owners of this land, the, the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples and uh, note that this always was and always will be Aboriginal land. Do you know I spoke to the children earlier and they did such a beautiful job then uh, with singing that Christmas carol and they told me they had to be at school at 7.20 this morning. So those of us that are former teachers, particularly Senator O'Neill and myself and others in the room, we know what it takes to get children to performance levels. So well done to the teachers, but particularly well done to the children to getting to school early today and for the sorts of practices that we all know that, that you would have done. And you did sound beautiful, so well done. And also to the parents and the caregivers and the grannies who got them there. They said they grumbled a bit about getting out of bed so early. But anyway, it's that time of the year we do these sorts of things. It just seems not that long ago that the speaker and I were here to light up the Christmas tree last year. It's been a very busy year for all of us here. And I'm sure that we are looking forward to Christmas and other celebrations that happen at this time of the year and to the big rest that we will hopefully all get in the month of January. Um, I am happy to announce that one of the Giving Tree charities we're supporting this year is an organisation called Community First Development. Community First Development is a First Nations-led community development and research organisation. Their purpose is to see First Nations communities thrive based on the principle of self-determination. Through this approach, they support communities to implement their own solutions. They listen to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities and create partnerships to implement local solutions to local problems. On the 30th of June this year, they celebrated the success of nearly 4,000 projects and over a thousand community engagements. They have certainly been very busy. Their projects cover a range of community needs, including economic and business planning, cultural preservation, learning, education, and health. It's easy this year to make a donation by using the QR codes next to the Christmas tree and their website, communityfirstdevelopment.org.au. I encourage everyone here to donate if you're able to support this important charity. There'll also be a number of choirs singing across Parliament House this year, so please spread the holiday spirit and give generously. I'd now like to welcome Ms Sharon Babiak. Sharon is the General Manager of Impact and Strategy at Community First Development, and we're very lucky to have you join us today, Sharon. Hello everyone. I also would like to acknowledge that we're on Ngunnawal, Ngambri country, this beautiful country, and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Thank you to the President of the Senate and to the Speaker and also to the Secretary and the team here at the Department of Parliamentary Services for inviting us to come along. Um, it's a real privilege to be here. First of all, we'd just like to pass on a quick apology from our CEO, Stephanie Harvey. She's a Bidjara woman and she's currently traveling um, at a UN dialogue. She sends her regards. Um, 
It's incredible discussion they're having on the role of traditional leaders in addressing hate speech. She sent me a uh, email this morning with a quote from one of the participants that I'd love to share with you. We are born with rights, human rights. Do not beg for these, expect them. This brings me to community first development. Um, everything we do is based on self-determination. First Nations people and communities are best placed to identify the solutions to their own challenges. We are a national First Nations-led community development and research organisation. What self-determination means in practice is that we work only at the invitation of communities and communities choose their priority activities that they want us to support. We work alongside with communities owning and leading each project. It's a really simple concept, but it's quite profound. It's a unique, truly grassroots up approach and it results in amazing outcomes. Our 20 years of culturally responsive CD experience combines with a large network of skilled volunteers that work across industries. So with community expertise as the foundation of every project, there's always a diverse range of projects and activities requested and needed right across Australia. So some examples of the type of work that we, we do and that communities have chosen. Uh, one remote WA community that we've been working with for years has prioritised their infrastructure. So that's been establishing telecommunications, solar power, uh, housing, sport and recreational facilities. And through this, we're also strengthening construction, maintenance and management skills in community as we go. Another community in Bartwe in Alice Springs requested support to develop a website and a Bush Foods e-commerce store, which they now run independently. Other communities have requested uh, support to keep culture and language alive and thriving. So a UN choir, so not far from here in the south coast, um, requested to support to keep running. Uh, we've supported the establishment of a heritage trail in WA, cultural and arts centres and programs right across Australia. We've also supported communities to deliver on their health priorities, such as birthing, children's nutrition and disability support. Sometimes our, result has, sometimes our support has resulted in significant First Nations-led community services and enterprises continuing where they may not have otherwise. So demand for our support outweighs our resourcing. So every donation helps and we can't thank you enough for inviting us to be part of the Parliament's Giving Tree program. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sharon, for those kind words. Um, I'd now like to invite the Speaker of the House of Representatives to say a few words, the Honourable Milton Dick MP. Well, thank you very much, Rob. And I think this is the best day of the year because here at Parliament House, we are officially launching Christmas for the whole nation for 2023. Who loves Christmas? Well, as the President knows, Christmas is very special to me because it is such a beautiful time of the year and we are so blessed to be able to be here in the nation's capital, but also to be with charities that do so much work, not just at Christmas time, but right throughout the year. The giving tree behind me since 2013 has raised around $30,000 for 21 charities and today as we've just heard those beautiful words, we're adding another charity to our great cause. But I'm delighted tonight, today to announce uh, another charity which is very close to my heart. And the President and I think about who we will support and who our parliament and our leaders can support. And without a doubt, this year in particular, Food Bank was chosen as the second charity. And my great friend, John Robinson, uh, a former leader in New South Wales, a former minister, and now does amazing work with Food Bank, that delivers over 80,000 meals per year 
86.7 million meals a year to people who need them. So when it comes to Christmas, it's not just about presents, it's also about thinking about people who need support. And that's what today is about. I know all my parliamentary colleagues uh, are in the spirit of Christmas, particularly uh, Senator Polly and Senator O'Neill, who are big devotees of Christmas, alongside the President and myself. But to the kids that are here today, you're going to light up one of the best trees in Australia. So thank you for joining us today. And I hope everyone has a wonderful Christmas season. Please dig deep and make sure you support these very worthwhile charities. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Well, a huge thank you to the speaker and the president for the opportunity to be here and be one of the recognised charities. I too want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that we're on, pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging and acknowledge these lands are and always will be Aboriginal land. Just by way of background, Food Bank is Australia's largest and most trusted food relief charity. We've been in operation for just over 30 years and we work with place-based organisations right across the country. We work with all the major charities and we provide food to those charities who are place-based, who know what their community needs, and we make sure that we do our best to deliver that food to those communities that need our support. Right now, we hear constantly talk around the cost of living crisis, and at Food Bank, we're seeing it firsthand with our charities. We're now seeing for the first time families who are coming, double income families who are going to work, who are paying rent or paying mortgage, who can no longer afford to put food on the table every day for themselves and their children. I've met some of these families. They're families who mum and dad will come home from work, they'll put meals on the table for their children and they'll tell their kids that they had a big lunch today and that's why they're not eating, so there's no guilt on the part of the children when it comes to actually uh, them sitting down and having a meal without mum and dad eating. The sad reality is that one in six households are now unable to eat three meals a day. And as I say, many of those are people who set an alarm, get up and go to work every day. Rents are going up, energy prices, all those things are putting pressure on family budgets and food has now become for many families a discretionary item in their budget. So they make choices about keeping the lights on, paying the rent, putting fuel in the car so they can get to work, and food just becomes one of those items that they have to cut back on. And sadly, we're seeing more and more of that. Donations to Food Bank are very important because whilst we rely on donated food, when I first started volunteering with Food Bank about 11 years ago while I was still in politics, uh, about 90% of the food that was distributed was donated and we bought 10%. That's now at over 30% of the food we distribute we now have to buy and that requires us to fundraise to be able to make sure that food's available so that the charities we work with know that when they log on to our ordering system that food will be available to be provided to their communities. So right now is a really challenging time for more and more people. And Christmas is obviously a time where that challenge becomes more apparent. In New South Wales, this year we're building 40,000 Christmas hampers, uh, 40,000 Christmas hampers, which is a 30% increase on what we built last year, just to try and keep up with that need and give families a decent Christmas where there's food on the table. So these are challenging times, and obviously if you are in a position to donate, we greatly appreciate it. It means so much to us and it more importantly means so much to that growing number of families in this country who sadly don't have enough to put food on the table. So thank you, thank you to the presiding officers for the opportunity and thanks to Rob uh, as well for the opportunity to be here today. Thank you so much. Thank you, John, and thank you, Sharon, for taking the time to be with us here today. Uh, now we're getting to the time we've all been waiting for. Um, but first of all, um, uh, to support our charities, we've helpfully provided QR codes here for you to snap uh, to help uh, for those in need uh, during this Christmas period. I'd now like to invite the presiding officers, John and Sharon, and two children from the choir to help launch the Christmas tree. The speaker will 
do the count. All right. Five, four, three, two, one. Three. Thank you. Uh, the uh, choir will now perform a few more songs, so if you um, are able to stick around, please do so. Um, and I invite the media to take um, photographs of the presiding officers uh, and the chari charity representatives um, at your leisure. Thank you. Good morning, everyone.
thank you. Um, thank you, kids. Oh, you'll hear a little bit more from them shortly, uh, but we'll take a brief pause here um, just so we can have photographic opportunity uh, with our guests, the presiding officers uh, and the tree, and the presiding officers will present the school um, with a certificate um, thanking them for their efforts here today. Thank you. Well, I think you need another round of applause because I could hear all of those words and I think I heard every single T. Is that something you've been working on, the T's? You did a great job and the way that you sang those Christmas carols was truly beautiful. So well done to you and your teacher and the speaker and I have got a beautiful certificate to, um, to give to you um, to thank you for coming here today. Thank you to your teacher for working with you and to your parents and your grannies and your carers for getting you up and at school on time. Thank you so much. Thank <laughs> you. 